Hey, what is up YouTube? This is TCG Sam, and in today's video, I'm going to be covering whether you should consider putting the sprite engine in your deck. So if you guys enjoy this type of content, be sure to let me know by leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing. But with all that being said, let's just hop straight into the video. So, you can see here in the second place, Wesley Snagger Falls List, he was playing a copy of Sprite Jet, Smashers, Gigantic, and notably to Sprite Elf. Um, so what I mean by the sprite engine is essentially just a couple of sprite cards in the deck, so like not a sp not a sprite deck. Um, as you can clearly see, this is just a danger tier, but he has sprite cards in it. Um, so this is one of the reasons why I actually wanted to talk about this topic in the first place. Um, the fact that it's becoming more popular, I'm gonna be going over some of the pros and some of the cons of playing these cards in your deck. Uh, so just topping straight into the pros of the engine, why people would even consider playing this engine in the first place. So the biggest reason why uh, people are playing this engine or even considering it is that the insane value a card like Dark the Dark Charmer gives you when going second into sprites. So if you just think about what a single Dark the Dark Charmer can do uh, if you play the sprite engine, you can go target your opponent's sprite blue, special summon the sprite blue, Blue grabs Jet, Special Summons Jet. Jet grabs either a Starter or Smashers, depending on how big your engine is. But let's just say you play like a minimal engine. You have a Sprite Smashers. So that's already one uh, one form of interruption or removal. Uh, but also, you have a Link 2 plus 2 level 2s on the board. So you can go into something like Gigantic Sprite. Um, Gigantic Sprite can summon something from deck. Or you just have a Link 4 right off the bat. So you can see how a single dark can grab you essentially turn into either four bot four bodies plus like a smashers like at the very minimum or like if you play gigantic you can extend your plays even further depending on what you want to summon from deck so that's kind of like the gist of why people are even considering uh the sprite engine and non-sprite decks but also the sprite engine can give you a lot of follow-up through elf so you saw in the previous list that they were playing two copies of elf that is not only because elf is like a pretty good Hard to end on because it gives you like protection and it acts as a pseudo disruption by summoning Merle on your opponent's turn, but it also gives you follow up. Um, it forces your opponent to deal with the monster, otherwise, it allow you to either summon back like a sprite monster like Jet or Blue for advantage, or like Merle every single turn, or even just a link too if they keep putting monsters on board. So that can be very, very powerful uh, follow up that your opponent definitely has to answer. Uh, so a card like Elf. Um, you just have easier access to it if you play the sprite engine because of the uh, increase in level twos in your deck. Uh, like I also mentioned earlier with uh, with the dark, it gen the sprite cards generate a lot of card advantage. So first of all, bodies, like I mentioned, uh, just the at the very minimum, um, you're if you summon back your opponent's blue, you can special summon your own jet, and then you have four bodies, uh, li four link materials worth of bodies on the board, um, plus so uh, either smashers or a starter. Uh, so like for example, if like you're playing a heavier um, Link 2 or Rank 2 engine, you can search a starter, starter summons another body from the deck. So you can see how quickly uh, you get these extra bodies on the board. These are also like good levels because you get to turn them into elf if you want uh, because you have a bunch of level 2s. Or you can access the Rank 2 toolbox, um, so like either Gigantic Sprite to summon something like Swap from the deck. You can go into Sky Cavalry Centauria if you wanted, or like Oni B Maru, Soul Sweeper, Mannequin Cat. Like, you just have so many options uh, with the level 2s. Uh, so that's definitely one of the biggest reasons why you consider the sprite engine. Like, it turns a card like Dark into something insanely threatening that your opponent has to answer um, when they're playing against sprite, because like, they don't know if you're playing the sprite engine. If you just go target blue, your opponent has to consider, oh, what happens if my opponent actually has like a jet in their deck? Like, that's just gonna quickly snowball out of control. Uh, so you can see how playing just like a very very tiny engine like uh, Jesse Cotton was here. One jet, one sp uh, smashers the main. Like that's the only uh, two like sprite cards that you really need in your deck. You don't need to play blue yourself or starter. Um, but just putting those two cards in his deck allowed him to have such a great matchup uh, going second into sprite and forcing your opponent to answer dark. That's not all for the pros though. Uh, the sprite cards, if you hard draw them, can also act as extenders. So if you consider something like Jet or Blue, they can special summon if you control a rank 2 or a level 2. Or uh, something a little easier to get with Red or Carrot, you can just special summon it if you control a level or a link 2 monster. So this can help you link climb or just go into rank 2 plays, which can be very powerful. They can act as additional starters. 
Um, so I put Italian brackets here because Spray Starter is essentially an emergency teleport. Yes, it does have its restriction, but it essentially does the same thing as emergency teleport in that it's able to build a board on its own and just generate a lot of advantage and also even replace itself uh, in the combo, which is incredibly powerful. Um, but if you just also have a bunch of like sprite monsters in your hand, the sprite monsters can turn into either just a bunch of link materials or it can turn into something like gigantic sprite to summon a level two from your deck to get your play started whether you're summoning out um like swap frog or something or like even Murley that can do something uh the sprite engine also allows you to cheat out cards like swap uh swap frog so kind of going off of what all the points i was mentioning earlier gigantic sprite summons any level two from the deck and Swap Frog is one of the definitely one of the best ones to summon because Gigantic Sprite alone summoning the Swap Frog turns into a Toad and an Elf, which means you can get up to two interruptions uh, and like two add backs of water. So like it's honestly really insane uh, how you can just put like the frogs in your deck. Uh, so like there are other Chillman decks that are playing the Frog Engine and the cards like Gigantic. You just got so much value off of that, and that's. Definitely one of the biggest reasons also to consider the deck, just because of how powerful cards like Elf and Gigantic are, even outside of the sprite deck itself. And then finally, one of the pros uh, of the deck, if you choose to play a bigger sprite engine, you can end on some potential disruptions like Sprite Red or Sprite Carrot. Uh, you can also It can also help you play through uh, hand traps potentially or play into back row going second. So for example, if you consider just starting off your regular combo by like going starter, you, you get access to red on the board. And then if you're able to just do your regular combo from there with the red just protecting you this entire time. So it's definitely something you want to consider. If your deck can actually fit in the bigger uh, sprite engine, you do have access to protecting yourself from hand traps or uh, backward cards. So it's definitely something you want to consider uh, if you were thinking of playing the sprite deck. So those are just some of the pros that I could think of when playing this deck. Let me know if you guys think of any other pros to playing uh, the engine. I guess I should add right now, um, the. One of the other pros is that like the engine itself doesn't necessarily have to be very big. I briefly touched on how like Jessica only played like the two sprites uh, in his main deck. Uh, you're playing Elf in the extra deck anyways, um, so you can consider it like maybe two extra deck uh, commitments plus like two uh, main deck commitments. So it's not a very big engine compared to some of the other engines that you have access to in the game. So it still allows you to fit in uh, a lot of cards like hand traps, going second cards. Uh, you can put all your engine cards in still. Uh, without having to risk uh, clogging up your deck with a big, big engine that you don't really want to see. Uh, before we move on to the cons, I just want to ask you guys, if you are enjoying this content so far, be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing. It really helps keep me motivated to keep posting more videos like this, and it really helps the channel grow. I would greatly appreciate it. As you can see here, barely any of the people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if you guys enjoy this content, Please let me know by just hitting that uh, subscribe button. It takes a couple of seconds of your time, but it makes a world of difference to me. So I really do appreciate it. Uh, moving on to the cons of the Sprite Engine. Uh, so of course, it's not all uh, sunshine and rainbows when you play this engine. Uh, for right off the bat, it has the potential to brick. If you think about um, like putting it in a deck like Danger Chillments, I'm going to just use Danger Chillements as an example because it's probably the most common deck you'll see a Sprite Engine in, uh, aside from Sprite itself. Like, if you just look at the sprite uh, cards, let's say you hard draw a card like Jet, you're not necessarily going to be able to actually use it for anything uh, unless you get a Murley onto the board. Um, so that requires you to already be playing uh, at that point. But also just a card like Smashers. Smashers is usually dead unless you specifically go down, like, either Gigantic Summoning Jet from your, uh, from your deck, or you're going into uh, Dark Stealing your opponent's uh, sprite monster. So Smashers can be considered a brick. Uh, in your deck. Of course, also, if you end up milling like the Smash or something, it doesn't do anything for you in the graveyard. Uh, so that's also just something you have to consider when putting in uh, an engine like this. Yes, it does have the potential to break. Uh, sort of going off that, it can also have little to no synergy with the other engines you're playing in your deck. So like I mentioned before, Sprite Jet is only really going to be live uh, when you have access to Murley onto the board, uh, which can be difficult sometimes. Um, you do obviously you do have many ways to get to it, but like that requires you to already be playing unless you hard draw them early. Uh, it's also important to consider that uh, if you're just having a handful of sprites, it doesn't necessarily get you to like, let's say for example, the tier limit uh, part of your deck. So if you, let's say, play like a bigger sprite engine, play like blue and jet, like sure you can gain a bunch of advantage, 
but gigantic if gigantic sprite is not like summoning a swap farm for example like what is it really doing for you uh at that point you're not if you summon merly cool uh you, you won't be able to do any of your tier plays because you're locked into uh level twos uh for that turn off a gigantic sprite so it's definitely something you have to keep in the back of your mind um this engine is risky because if you do see it it can potentially just not do anything for you in your hand if you don't have the right setup and then of course finally uh specifically regarding gigantic and sprite starter these do have the restriction that lock you into level link or rank two monsters uh, which can be very problematic if you're not playing uh, like pure sprites. So like it prevents you from going into bigger link plays like Zero Boros. It prevents you from going to your tier limit fusion. So that's why uh, you probably won't see a card like Sprite Starter in like a sprite engine out uh, in like danger tier limits. For example, just because the restriction can be very very um, hindering if uh, if for example you have to start with it. Uh, yes, I know you can always just activate starter after you do your entire combo. Yes, that's definitely a possibility. But it's just something you have to uh, you have to remember. Essentially, once you access this part of your engine, you're not able to uh, go back to like your other engine for the rest of the turn. So you can't go back to doing like tier limit stuff after you uh, activate your sprite stuff. So unfortunately, like sprite starter may not be like an actual starter for a uh, tier limit stack. It doesn't actually get your play started because it doesn't get you access to your tier engine. Yes, you can play with just sprite cards like Swamp Frog, for example, but it's just something to keep in the back of your mind. Uh, so what decks can you actually use a sprite engine in? Um, the most common one I, I keep bringing up is Danger Tier Elements. It's the one that's seen the most success right now. Just because the Tier Elements engine is so powerful, um, the sprite uh, cards just give it a better going second option uh, with a card like Dark being able to take your opponents. Uh, Blue applying immense pressure to them. Uh, so on that note, decks that can play like Dark and that can use like the bodies meaningfully. So for example, if you're playing like a, a Link deck or something, you need Dark, take your opponent's Blue, Blue, search Jed, and then you have a bunch of bodies on board. You have level 2s and Link 2s on board to make either Elf or Gigantic. It's definitely something you want to uh, just think about if, even if you're not playing Danger Tier. Uh, some common level 2 strategies you can play this in, Melfi for example. Uh, the Melfis are all level 2s, so it does synergize quite well with the sprites just because their cards are ge essentially generic level 2 support. And something like Paleozoic Frog, um, I haven't really tested this out, but it's just an idea. Um, you can see how uh, it can potentially synergize with that engine just because you're able to summon Swap Frog directly from your deck. All your, all your guys are level 2 essentially, and you're just able to synergize very, very well with the sprite cards. So let me know what you guys thought about uh, this video. Um, let me know if you guys would consider putting a sprite engine in your deck. I, rank, I know that not every deck is going to be able to support it because of like different restrictions, for example. Um, but it's definitely a very cool idea that I think has a ton of potential. Just because um, adding a few extra cards in your deck essentially can raise the ceiling of your deck by so much. So it can catch your opponent off guard, for example, if you just have a random Link 2 and like a level 2. That turns into Gigantic. Gigantic itself is not only big, but it also has the potential to summon something very powerful from the deck like Swap Frog. That can completely catch your opponent off guard and that can continue uh, helping you play even after you get Hand Trap. So raising the ceiling of your deck just, just at the cost of putting a few extra cards in your deck can be very, very good. Uh, but it's also important to remember like there are downsides to this engine. Uh, of course, you can brick on it, and the restrictions can really hurt you depending on the deck that you're playing. So do keep that in mind. Um, once again, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed, and once again, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.